Good morning, Mr. Goldberger. What do you mean, good morning? Do I pay you to give me better reports? How do you listen to me? Mr. Goldberger! Not now, later. When the city types I ask for. Yes, but you let it late, Mr. Guggenheimer. If only you'd wait. I never wait. I'm Guggenheimer. By blue, I am. I am directing the stock exchange scene. And I ask for 20 city types. And I get blue. Nothing. Nothing. 20 city types. Don't you know there's a depression in the city? Give him six city types. Six city types? Aber Herr Goldberg, ich erkläre, ich erlege Ihre Schiene. Ich kann doch nicht arbeiten, das ist ganz unmöglich. Wie kann ich mit Sie... Silence! Ah. Oh, Mr. Goldberger? Not now, later. Yes, Mr. Goldberger. But Mr. Goldberger, this is Oh, no, now I got mutiny. Ever since I've come in this studio, it's been nothing but argument, argument, argument. Yes, Mr. Yes. Goldberger, but... Yes, but Mr. Goldberger. Can't you understand the King's English? Scram! Yes, Mr. Goldberger. Get up! Ruth, Cat! I honor you with soils and my soul. You can never be smashed. I'll deal with him. Who oh, where is he? Who oh, where's who? Not be smoicher. Oh, Mr. Goldberg, did you really think I was being besmirched? Say, what is I'm acting? Oh, Mr. Goldberger, do change your mind and give me a chance. Say, can't I get away from it? Even here in my own office, everywhere I go, people want to act. Yes, Mr. The Goldberg. lift boy wants to act. The commissioner wants to act. The waitresses want to act. The only guys around here that don't want to act are the people that I pay to act. Yes, Mr. Goldberger. All right. I'll give you a chance to act. Yes, Mr. Goldberger. You can act the part of being my secretary. Oh. Did you make that appointment for me with them Northern financiers with the Rigby Syndicate? No, I forgot. Then do it now. You forgot. One of these days, the bank will forget to advance me money, and you'll forget to tell me that. Oh, I believe they're going to. Eh? Well, uh, they might. Might? Well, what are you talking about? They might what? Stop your finances. They're in there. They've been waiting about an hour. Who is? Your bankers. And they've been waiting for me? No, Mr. Goldberger. That's what we've got to say. No, Mr. Goldberger. Firmly and finally, no. Why, hello, gentlemen. This is a pleasant surprise. You got a letter about the overdraft? Don't mention it, Mr. Hutchison. I'm not the man to bear malice. Have a cigar. My colleagues and I, as governors of the bank, have been going into the huge sums of money advanced to this studio. Uh, have a cigar. We are convinced that the time has come to cry home. Oh, well, couldn't you just cry a slow down a bit? No, Mr. Goldberger. Our patience is exhausted. We've decided not to advance you another penny. But, gentlemen, you can't do this to me. I've got three world-shaking pictures in production. I'm not the man to boast, but they're positively stupendous, terrific, phenomenal. They're superfluous. Exactly. Now, wait a minute, boys. Have a heart. I got people with money interest. Yes, you've told us that story before. But this time, I'm speaking you the truly. You've heard of Rigby, the Bradford Wool millionaire? That guy is just crazy to put dough into my studio. He certainly would be. No, it's no good, Mr. Goldberger. That's our final word. But, Bell, what do you want? Mr. Rigby on the phone. 
day. You hear that? Ten times a day, that fella rings me up just begging me to take his money. That's the John Rigby who formed the Rigby Syndicate to finance film production. Oh, hello, Mr. Rigby. And how is by you everything? They tell me he and Crowther completely reorganized the Excelsior studio. Well, did you go on into my little proposition? Yes, we have. We've been making inquiries. And if you think we're going to put good money into a studio like yours, you must be daft. He's simply falling over himself to get in. Your studio's finished, washed up, fast. <laughs> you should hear the nice things he's saying about my studio. Oh, come, come, Mr. Rigby, you exaggerating. <laughs> Why, every film you make's a bigger flop than the last one. You should just listen to that guy pleading. Well, in brief, Mr. Rigby, how much would you be prepared to put in? In brief, not. Well, that's a very handsome offer. But I don't think I shall be needing all that. Uh, not all at once. Hey, what the deuce are you talking about? I've said nothing. Now, look here, Goldberger. Let's get down to brass tacks. The only thing that might interest us would be to buy your studio at a junk price and turn it into a garage or something. Well, you, you've really bowled me over. I couldn't say yes right away. But if you'll come over to the studio, we can go into details. I'll send my car for you. Where are you staying? Oh, the hotel's splendid, <laughs> if you think it's worth your trouble. Well, that's that. I kind of hate to say goodbye to you boys for the first time. Goodbye, but Mr. Goldberger, I gather that the Rigby Syndicate is interested. <laughs> if a half a million spells interest, then them boys is infatuated. Then there's no need for any talk of goodbye. With the Rigby Syndicate behind you, we shall naturally be delighted to carry your overdraft. Well, of course, I got to consult my new partners about that first. But surely after our long associations, you wouldn't think of deserting us. No, a guy's got to look out for himself. Ah, but there, my sentiments are always doing me dirt. I, I like you boys. And you'll continue to let us handle your overdraft? Well, I'm a sap to do it, but okay. Thank you, Mr. Goldberger. Good day, gentlemen. Goodbye, Mr. Goldberger. <laughs> Goodbye, Goodbye <anyway>. gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> well, is the bank going to let us finish our pictures? Them pictures is going to be finished if it costs me every penny they've got. Tell Perkins to polish the car. But he polished it this morning. Then tell him to polish it again. He's got to right away pick up Mr. Rigby and his friends at the Hotel Splendid. We've got to give them a slap-up reception and get out last year's balance sheet. Not the real one. No, the one that shows a million pounds profit. We've got to impress them guys. Ah, so what did you with my city type do? What are you gibbering about? I nothing did. Now you got me talking like you. All morning I wait for six city types. Gentlemen from the stock exchange. Where are they? Ask me that. There's the casting director. He's left. Oh, he has, has he? Well, he sacked him yesterday. Well, that's different. Just so long as he didn't leave without permission. You see to it. Come yes, on, Mr. Googie. What do you want? Who's in charge of the casting? I am. What? For half an hour until the pub closes. But this is urgent. These six actors are wanted right away. Oh, if that's all you want. I can find you six actors. They're my articles. But are they city types? Sure, they're in the city. Well, can you get them right away? Sure, I know where they work. I'm taking no chances. I swallowed three of these yesterday. <coughs> I can't get anything. Give it to me. They're sure to give us something. I know what they'll give us. What? Huh? Shut up. We've had that. Not us. Not us. The queue. Oh, uh, remember the band? We're only trying to wear an enormous bit of bread and butter. I wish I had some of that bread and butter that you ain't got to go with the sausages I ain't got. I wouldn't ask stuff myself. Hey, quick, they're moving in. Free. Everything we have in life is free. Things we couldn't buy with LSD. Someone put them there for you and me. Free. Who would pay to hear a symphony? Listen to the songbirds in the tree. 
songbirds sing a lovely melody. We've got the arches and the alleys to shelter us from winter's cold. We've got the green hills and the valleys when summer is spread in our gold. Free. No one could be luckier than we. Nature never had a lock or key. Isn't that the way it ought to be? We've never had a million. We're just six wanderers, that's all. But we're rich as millionaires. Because we haven't worries or cares. <coughs> Pardon? We're just six tumbleweeds that keep on tumbling along. On the highway, on the byway, we're singing a song. Free. I listen to the pattern of raindrops, the lobe of the twilight, the song of the birds mating, and the rainbow with its divine chord of color harmony, giving promise of sunshine to come. Sun bursting through is a strain of glory, turning a world of blue harmonies into a beautiful golden rhapsody. We see the gold in every sunset and silver in the moonlight too. We see a pearl in every raindrop and diamonds in the morning. Just free. Well, what did we get? Oh, we got a packet. You've got to go, hi. What's the matter? Got the sack? No, I've just got a job for you. Yeah, the chess has got a job. We can all have a holiday. No, you've all got jobs. Now work in the studio. They want us for the pictures. Yeah, are we going to see the film actresses? Oh, shut up, Cecil. Look, I got a film face, Dracula. Shut up. This is a rush for you. You'll have to hurry. Go and get your costume first. They dress it on the ticket. Yeah, what are we going to go there for? You're all going to get dressed up for six city time. And remember, fellas, as soon as you get to the studio, pretend you know all about it. Whatever they ask you, you say yes. Nothing else but yes. He just told you yes. yes. Well, plain yes. Yes. No, half a more. How much are we getting? Yeah, we're going to surprise you. We want a hundred pounds a week. <laughs> But I'm going to surprise you. You can all have a guinea a day. We'll surprise you. We'll take it. OK, fellas, uh, don't let me down. I'm supposed to get six legitimate actors. Instead, I'm giving the job to you, fellas. What's illegitimate? Boys, we've got a job. Yes, we've got work. Not so loud, you think again. It's not real work. We're going to be actors. Yes, it's money for nothing. Then we won't want this anymore. Yes, yes, but what's the title of your picture? I don't know. Our Albert said this. We're to play the city tribe. Give him the tickets. I haven't got the tickets. Charlie's got them. Where's Charlie? Charlie, come here with the tickets. Where are they? Come out the way. Where are they? Where are they? Where's the tickets? It's a moment. What are you looking for? The tickets. The tickets. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Goldberger's new picture, All for Love. Yeah. Oh, swell title, that. You must have paid a lot of money for that title. What, do they pay money for picture titles? Certainly. Good titles are hard to find. <laughs> Hear that, boys? Huh? They pay good money for picture titles. Well, what about it? Well, picture titles all around us. Here. Here's one. You going somewhere? No. Top Hat. Top Hat. Oh, Top Hat. I see what you... Top Hat reminds you of the picture called... Cool. Cool. Look at that blue bottle. Look. Got it. What's that? Escape Me Never. Oh, here's a picture. Look. Don't blame me. <laughs> I know it, Ted. What? She married her boss. Here's a picture. Here's a picture. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's this? We're not dressing. Here's a picture. Look at this. <laughs> Just a minute. What's this? Mutiny on the bounty. <laughs> here's a picture. Give me two bob for it. Two bob, yeah. Trade a horn. <laughs> oh, here's another picture. Look at this. 
What's this? Tudor Rose. Here you are. There's a picture. Wait a minute. What are you doing with the paving stone? Under two flags. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, look. Look what I found. A tin of kitchen powder. What's that for? If I had a million. <laughs> well, cheerio, boy. Cheerio. Oh. oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's this? Oil for the lamp to China. Here you are, buddy. Here's one. <laughs> the ghost goes west. Show us the hammer. Here's one. What's that? Farewell to arm. Come here, what's that? The general died at dawn. Here you are, boys. This is worth a fortune. What's this? The camels are coming. Ah, last night while going up the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I really wish he'd go away. Who is it? The invisible man. Just a second. What's this? Follow the flit. Where are your costumes? Hurry up and get dressed, and you. Come on, boys, the costumes are here. Hey, look, look, boys, look, look, a picture. Oh, wait, don't tell us, don't tell us, we'll guess. I think I know it. Take your time guessing. She got what she wanted. No. Oh, I know, the amateur gentleman. No? Well, what is it? Whoopee. Oh, oh. to town. The last of Mr. Cheney. Shut up, Shovin Cecil. Where's Charlie? Charlie, where are you? Charlie, I'm here, I'm here. What are you doing down there? You mustn't go down there, it's private. Excuse me, boys. Pardon. Tiny. Oh. Oh. You for 
the Goldberger studio, sir? Yes. Yes. Well, isn't it nice of him to send us this shatterbank? That's nothing. When we get down to the studio, they're going to give us free beer. Well, I wish I had some of that free beer that he hasn't got to go with the bread and butter. You haven't got to go with the sausages. I haven't got. I wouldn't ask half myself. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir? He says he wish he had some of the free beer that he hasn't got to go with the sausages. Oh, shut up saying what I say. Let's slip in. Yes, come on. Where's Charlie? What have I done? What have I done? Oh. Come on, come on. Get a move on. <laughs> I shot him. Tell him what. How to throw me out? Come on. It's a great honor to welcome you to the Goldberger Studios. Does he mean us? Say yes. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, honored custard as I am to make you public speeches. Oh, sorry. Uh, the pleasure is mine. <laughs> Will I uh, please? Uh, how are you, sir? How are you? How are you? I saw the first. I saw the first. Before we go any further, I suggest we go to mine office. What would you say to a bottle of scots? I say, how do you do and goodbye to me? Then, gentlemen, follow me. Yes. This gentleman is the reception home. You will notice the ceiling is made from genuine alabaster, and the marble pillars here is from real honey. Honey's too good. Positively over here, we got the lift that's always going up and down. Hope. You know, there's something very familiar about you. You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, yes, well, put the words back again and stop messing about. What's the matter with this lift? Why isn't it down here? Because it's on the eighth floor. Here, I'll fix it for you. Where's Charlie? Well, some of the time. This way, gentlemen. <laughs> allow me. Oh, don't allow him. He takes liberties. Allow me. Oh. Follow me, gentlemen. Haven't we met somewhere before, Miss... Uh, um... Yes, downstairs, two minutes ago, and the name is Smith. Oh, not Miss Smith. Why, no, your brother. What do you do? Yes, he's the chap that spends all those weekends at Brighton. This way, please. Oh! <laughs> now, let that be a lesson to you. Ah, yes. uh, gentlemen, can I persuade you to have a little drink? Uh, not us. <laughs> we don't need any persuading. Now, where's that corpse? Oh, yes, I've heard that story before. Give it to me. I suppose you are Mr. Rigby. Am I? What have you got to lose? Say yes. Oh, Mr. Rigby, why, yes, of course. I thought so. And you will be Mr. Crowder. Yes. yes. Uh, plain yes. yes. And I assume these gentlemen are your financial advisor. What did he call us? Remember what Albert said, we've got to say yes. All right, but he can't go too far. Yes. Help yourself. <laughs> He's ahead of you. <laughs> Have a cigar. Uh, have one of mine. Uh, they're all ahead of you. You have one, too. Uh, oh, thank you. Excuse me. Pleasure. Miss Smith, bring in that balance sheet. You know the one. Yes, Mr. Goldberger. He would want me when I'm like this. Just like a man. I remember when I was standing in my green satin negligee and John Barrymore came in. Yes, you told me that last week. But luckily, you'd got a police whistle. Nonsense. That was George Arliss. Oh. I am glad you are seeing the place for yourselves. You'll admit it looks a whole lot better than you expected. It's looking better every minute. <laughs> and you wouldn't turn the place into a garage, would you? No, make it a filling station. Ah, here is the balance sheet for last year. The profit for last year was a cool million. How do you keep it cool? Money always burns a hole in my pocket. Oh, that's awfully good. I shall have to laugh. <laughs> Mr. Rigby, what do you think of a figure like that? Wonderful. Suits me. Shall we eat it here or take it with us? <laughs> and now, gentlemen, let's get down to business. Would you like to come in on the ground floor? Any floor will do us. I knew you'd change your mind. Excuse me. Say, I'd like to have you boys working with me. Listen, if it goes on like this, you'll always be with us. Say, that's swell. Excuse me. Make a note of those points. And can I depend upon you gentlemen to back me up? That half the card proposition like this is hard to find. You really think so? We know so. We'll put everything we've got into this job. Say, so much I wouldn't even want. Say, uh, a hundred thousand. Eh? Say, a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. Here, boys, you say it. A hundred thousand. No, say it like he said it. A hundred thousand. 
Is there anything else you should want us to say some more? Not a thing, Miss Smith. But there is something I want you to do. I want you shall sign your name to a simple form of agreement. Look here. Hear that? He's going to sign us up. Yes. The first step to start him. Yes. Just draw up a simple little contract. Yes. And now, gentlemen, I'm going to take you for a tour of inspection while the young lady types the note. You do the typing. Let her show us round. Excuse him, miss. Excuse him. Come on, you've got to see some scenes being shot in the studio downstairs. <laughs> Two oh eight, take one. This is the ark that was built by Noah, says he, we are in for a real downpour. So get aboard the ark and pay your fare, we'll sail for Madara at a market fair. Shem, Ham, Javit, my son's on deck, shouting all aboard for a sail around the wreck. And all the living animals are coming in twos, they've all taken tickets for the pleasure cruise. Now the ark is open, see the animals, chimpanzees, and bumblebees, giraffes, crocodiles, kangaroos and tigers, and birds of every hue. And here comes Mr. Teddy Bear and little Teddy too. Pole cats and walruses, frogs and skunks, and two little fleas who are looking for bunks. Two little wombats are singing with bliss. Heaven help the sailors on a night like this. This is the ark that was built by Noah. And the world again, they're gonna rain no more. This is the ark and it's up to date. Please keep your fingers off the chromium plate. Okay, for song, when you hear a jazz new beat, from his million dollar feet, now don't say that sounds okay, say okay for song. Okay for song, when a roar goes through the house, Nicky's married, Minnie Mouse, now don't say it sounds okay, say okay for song. Of a champagne cork, in the ringing of the wedding bells, in the crackling of the five pound note, each little sound the sweetest music. Okay for sound. When the chancellor comes around asking five bob in the pound, I don't say it sounds okay, say okay for sound. Mr. Perry on a tennis ball and Sir Thomas with a symphony. The gentleman must have lost his way. Been shedding the girls on your own again, eh? He's belonging uh, 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 to mine party. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Goldberger. We can shoot the scene again. How did you like it? Well, I think it looks pretty, uh... I think it looks pretty awful. In fact, I think it looks terrible. Well, what's the matter with it? What's the matter with it? It's, it's got a... Uh... Do I pay you to ask me what's the matter with it? This scene is awful, ain't it? Yes. There you are. These people know their onions. Go on, tell him. What, about onion? No, tell him what's the matter with his Noah's Ark. But he, oh, his Noah's Ark, oh. yes. Well, you see, every Noah's Ark was ever his uncle's runaway. Uncle's runaway? My cousin does a bunk. Cousin does a bunk. Antelope, antelope. antelope. You see, every Noah's Ark was ever a couple of antelopes. A couple? We'll have a dozen. And buy them so they light up. Yes, but Mr. Goldberg... Don't we... argue. These gentlemen have the desecrating eye. From now on, they will give what orders they like. And everybody must do what they like, even if they don't like. Do you mean to say we can give orders? Positively. We can say, do this and don't do that? Just ask for what you want and you'll get it. Where's the bar? Cool, I can't think of some scrumptious things to say. <laughs> well, that's that. Mr. Goldberg... Don't bother me, I'm busy. Oh, it's the letter. Well, what are you arguing about? Just a little formality, gentlemen. Look, two signatures will be enough. Perhaps you and Mr. Crowder would sign. What do you want us to do? I want you to sign John Rigby on that line and Ernest Crowder below. What's it for? This is your name in the picture. Oh, John Rigby. Now, Ernest Crowder below. Ernest Crowder below. Not below, you mug. There you are, Mr. Goldberger. Thank you. Look after Mr. Rigby and his friends while I take this letter to the bank. Hey, you, conduct these gentlemen through the studios and understand whatever they say goes. Did you hear that? He said we've got to get everything we want. What about me? Don't I get anything? Oh, shut up, Cecil. Just when I get nice and serious, you start slipping. Oh! Now, look at you. Oh! Here, did you drop something? 
Ja, ja, ja. Himmel, kreuz, Donnerwetter noch einmal. City Tides, that's what. I ask for City Tides. Gentlemen from the city. And look what they send me. I don't know what you're talking about. Ah! Shocks fair note. Look what they send me for six city types. City types? No wonder you're sore. <laughs> city types, they look so dumb they couldn't even be office boys. They insist on seeing Mr. Goldberger. And Mr. Goldberger insists on not seeing you. After all, there's only four of you. No, where's the other two? There's some mistake here. You bet there are four mistakes. And you tell your agent if I want sandwich men, I'll let him know. <laughs> Dear boys, boys, you know, look important. We're supposed to be picture attractors. Picture attractors? Well, uh, portrait enticers. Portrait enticers? Film Wait, magnets, film, film magnets. Boy. Boy. Here, where's Charlie? I had him a minute ago. Once again, boys. Charlie! Here, I'll give you a hand. Come here. Let me go, let me go. Idiot! He insulted me. No one should insult this girl before me. Well, I didn't know you wanted to insult her first. I'm a good man to suck you. Oh, you have, have you? Go on, hit me. Hit me. Oh. There's service for you. Yes, everything we ask for, we get. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Be shoot, be shoot, be shoot. Be shoot, be shoot, be shoot. Quiet. Everybody ready? Yes. Right. Turn them over. Quiet. Running. 372, take four. Go.
why you go with it. That's one of the bosses. I cannot. What of my beautiful belly? It is nicht fertig. The what? My belly, my belly. That's all right. I always get like that before lunch. Why don't you wear corsets? Oh, damn it, Christ. Oh, Mr. Guggenheimer. Mr. Guggenheimer. I'll give you Guggenheimer. Look. Oh, that's nothing. A piece of steak will fix that up. Yeah, that's right. And some nice fried onions with it. Yes, and get him some as well. It'll put his belly right. I'm through. Get another dance. Get two while you're at it. So, now they walk out on me. Okay, you gentlemen dip the apple cart. All right, you pick it up. That's fair. Now I dropped it down. Ah. Right. Now I picked it up. Ah. On the stage where it did on the floor. Try. Ah. How am I to do what is left undone? Listen, you go and get yourself some sausages and sauerkraut and leave it to us. We'll undo all you've done, whether it's done. Underdone, well done, done. Half done, 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 done.
they are not. Ring the bell, I speak. But Mr. Goldberg has said... Ring it the bell or I ring it the neck. <laughs> yes, Mr. Goldberg. Very gratifying. Very gratifying indeed. I see they promised the fullest support. I confess I can't understand their enthusiasm. Well, what's good enough for John Rigby is good enough for us. We shall be happy to grant you further accommodation. Then you can accommodate me with 10,000 pounds right away. 10,000? All right, all right, if you're going to quibble. No, no, no. I'll authorize payment at once. For you, Mr. Goldberger. Mm. Hello? What's that? No, mm. oh. Say, you crazy? Not me, it is what is crazy. I am just mad. Why, it's unbelievable. Listen, boys, them financier guys is making trouble. They've interfered with the shooting. They've beat up one of my stars. They've insulted my best director, and now half the staff is threatening to walk out. I'm coming right over there to stop it. Now, listen, Mr. Googie. Goldberger. What? Uh, wait a minute. Do I understand that you're going to interfere with these gentlemen? Believe me, when I finished interfering with them guys, them guys will know that they've been interfered with. Oh, shut up, Googie. Then you certainly must not go to the studio. What? Not go to my own studio? Precisely. These gentlemen are obviously doing things that should have been done years ago. We insist on your keeping right away. I won't do it. Now, well, listen. Well, then, no money. Wait a minute. Now, please, boys, don't be rash. I got a picture to finish. I got to show it next week. Then you'd better be reasonable. Yes, and keep away from the studio. Let these gentlemen have complete freedom of action. But, boys... Now, give those instructions. Oh, Googie... What? What? What's that you talk? They can what they like do. They can who they like fire. Ah, him. Here, he's talking about us. <laughs> Here, we can sack whoever we like. I'm going to start with him. You won't fire me because I fire myself. Ah, don't be a sports boy. Let us fire you. I go, but I take with me my cameraman, my assistant, my secretary, my sound man, and all the people who makes me see the films. You can put your jobs in my pipe and smoke yourselves. Well, remember yes. this. Where there's no smoke, there's no insurance policy. And you... And remember, a Rolling Stone goes in one ear and comes out the other. And, 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 and you can't forget what an elephant can't remember. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but some of the time some of the people are there. But when the people... Huh? Where'd you get that hat? Himmel kreuz, dolle wetter noch einmal. Verflucht der Dilettanten war noch süß, der Müller. Now, Bud, Chess and I have been through these trips and we find this is the easiest. Well, what's the story? Well, Chess is supposed to be a cowboy in Arizona and his wife run off with another man. I'll be the cowboy, I've got a wife. I'm the cowboy. Yeah, but your wife's already run away, give me a chance. Besides, all my pals call me Hoot. I'm the cowboy. And I've got a horse, and I want to use it. You can't use it. Well, what am I going to do with the oats? I'll tell you what to do with the oats. Go on, a dare you. Tell me here, a dare you. Give them to me. That's not the proper answer. Oh, That's yes, not the proper answer just at all. Just a minute, just a minute. He's the cowboy. What am I going to be, the last of the Moe Cohens? He's the cowboy. It's favoritism. That's all it is, just favoritism. When you find out that your wife ran off with another man, you mount your faithful steed, dash across the prairie, and your horse drops dead. What happens to me? You're the effects man. What's that? You make noises. What? Rude ones? Hi! Now, when you hear him mention his faithful steed, you make noises like uh, horses trotting. Like what? Horses trotting. Come on, come on, let's make a start. All right, Jimmy. Above my head, a shimmering sky, with now the tiniest cloud. Beneath my oh, feet... You want a cloud here? Uh, a little cloud going across on a bit of a string. Looks lovely. I don't want a cloud. Yes, have a cloud. I don't want a cloud. What arm's a cloud going to do you? I don't want one. Anybody else would have a cloud. You don't want yes, one. Yes, they would, but I won't. A little teeny weeny cloud. Would, would you take something you didn't want? Yes. What? A cloud. Well, I don't want a cloud. Well, have a, have a, have a dewdrop. I don't want a dewdrop. Just a teeny weeny one. I don't want one. Hmm. Above my head, a shimmering sky, with now the tiniest cloud. Beneath my feet and all around me lay desert sands. My faithful steed, exhausted life. Well, well, what's the idea? Trotting. Tr I don't want it. What do you want? My faithful steed, exhausted lad. Oh, lad, lad. Get up. My faithful steed, exhausted lad. <coughs> How'd you like it? Like it? Like what? That's the noise I make when they're laying. Laying? What a lay? Your horse. My horse? You said the eggs the horse did lay. I said nothing Your of the kind. Pardon me. You said the eggs the horse did lay. Nothing about the eggs the horse did lay. My faithful steed exhausted lay. Yes, that's what you said. The eggs the horse did lay. 
No eggs and no hoofs. That, that's the same. What's the same? Eggs and hoofs. Hoofs is French for eggs in English, Jasper. Hmm. To the law. Hmm. That's how well. A vulture overhead, circled round the hapless pet. Just a minute. What's the idea? I'm exercising it. A vulture overhead. A what? A vulture. Oh, physical vulture, I know. A vulture. Oh, a season ticket. Season ticket, that's a vulture. A what? Vulture. Vulture? Vulture. Vulture? Vulture. 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 A vulture overhead, circled round the hapless pair. <laughs> Just a minute. What's the idea? I'll get it right this time. If you do get it right, it'll be a miracle. A what? A miracle. Oh, I know, one eyeglass. That's a monocle. Well, what's a miracle? Have you ever seen a cow grazing in a pasture? What, just now? Just now? Just now what? A cow past us. Past us? Past who? Me? No. You? No. Who did pass? No one, no one. Past you. Well, how is it it passed you and it didn't pass me? Didn't pass me at all. Hasn't passed you. Past you. Oh, before we got here. Before we got here? After. After, after what? The bullock. There's no bullock. Get it back again. Get it back again. I won't have a look at it. Bring it back? It can't come back. It hasn't gone. It's here. Past you. Blimey, it must be going quick. I can't see it. It isn't going quick at all. It's very, very slow. A cow. Grazing past you. <laughs> I know how you do it. How silly of me. I've been... Would you believe it's so easy, isn't easy? it? Easy? You get me to look over there, the cow comes out here. I don't care where you look. Look where you like. Go on, go on, do it again. All right, cow. Grazing pasture. <laughs> what is it, a flying cow? Do it again. Bring the cow out again. Go All on. right, cow. Grazing pasture. I say English. Hey, hey. I say English. Hey, just a minute. What's the idea? I'm trying to work out a scene. Yes, but we're working at a running complimentary. You mean a running commentary? What's the matter here? Well, there's an all-in wrestling scene to be done, and I say it should be done like those BBC blokes do it. Yes, and I say it should be done the American style. Well, what's the difference? There's a lot of difference. If you have the English commentator, you know the wrestling match may be good. On the other hand, it may be indifferent. Of course. These BBC blokes, they must tell the truth. Certainly. And to the listeners, it may not sound so good. But if you have the American commentator, it doesn't matter whether the wrestling match is good or bad. He's got it all written on the paper before he starts. Well, why not try it both ways? That seems the best idea. Well, that settles it then. Come on, we'll do it the American way first. Where are the wrestlers? They're not called till after lunch. Here, we're, we'll be the wrestlers. Right. Can I have the next wrestle with you? Are you coming with us, bud? No, I'm waiting to find that cow to pass you. Everybody ready? American style first. OK, let her go. Hello there, folks. This is Elmer B. Rocker speaking. Elmer B. Rocker is the broad-minded broadcaster from Broadway. At present, I am spinning you a bib from the Chicago Stadium. Tonight is the night of all nights. Tonight, I am bringing you your fireside through my commentary. A wrestling match for the championship of the world and $500,000 between Mike Muldoon, the Missouri murderer, and Jake Swinehunt, the Arkansas assassin. This is a needle fight, folks, and they're both out for blood. There's a swell crowd gathered here tonight, a swell crowd. All around the ringside, I see film stars, financiers, racketeers, gangsters, gunmen and their moles, crooks, and other twizzes. Oh, folks, you ought to be along here. You'd feel right at home. And now, while we're waiting for the wrestlers to appear, the organ is playing by the kind courtesy of Hardy's Lavender Water. Remember, it is not how you look or how you dress, but how you smell. Hello, folks. Here comes Mike Muldoon, the Missouri murderer, the guy that keeps the Undertaker busy. Oh, folks, I wish you could see him. I wish you could see him. 450 pounds of real raw meat. And is he tough? Is this baby tough? He's so tough he was vaccinated with a pneumatic road drill. And here comes Jake Swinehunt, the Arkansas assassin. Had a baby. Had a baby. And is he the hairy mammoth out of the cockeyed world? They're getting kind of friendly. They're warming up to their job. They're, they're looking one another over again in the center of the ring. A guy at the side has just raised his hat to a lady at the back. They're going back to the corners, and they're waiting for the gong. There goes the gong, folks, and the match has started. They both dash to the center of the ring. The murderer springs at the assassin like a rat and a cat. He gives him a dig in the floating kidney as he passes. One more dig like that, and the floating kidney's gonna sink. They're spinning around the center of the ring. I think the assassin's after his favorite stranglehold. He's got it. He's got his arm around the other guy's neck. He's gonna kiss him. He's gonna kiss him. No, the feeling's worn off. They're still spinning around. Now the murderer's doing the attacking. He's after him. He's got him by the snitch. Right by that old schnuzzle. And is he mortified? Is he mortified? The assassin picks the murderer up in the air. He's got him held tightly to his chest like a mother would hold a baby. But I don't think he's got the same intentions that a mother would have. They're going down to the floor. The murderer is dragging the assassin down. Wow, this is butchery. It is butchery. Strong men are fainting. Women are screaming, kill him, but still they go on. There's blood everywhere. Blood everywhere. Ah, oh, folks, you should have come along and brought the children. He's got him. He's got him by the ear. He's dragging that lug right off. 
Wow, I wish you could see the agony on this guy's face. He squirms, he wriggles, he kicks, he bites, but the other guy still holds on. They're still on the floor, folks, still on the floor. Now they're face to face. The murderer's got a half Nelson, a half Nelson. I think he's poking his eye out. Wow, the speed these guys are going is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. This is more than flesh and blood can stand. They can't keep this up forever. Here's two all in wrestlers, very nearly all out. He's got him, he's got him on the floor. He's poking him in the belly, believe, but believe me, it's some scrap. And the murderer, the murderer is the winner. Had a baby. Good night, everybody. Right. Now we do it the English way. And now we're going to take you over to Wembley Stadium for the All In Wrestling. You know, the running commentary. And as I know, there's no one more thoroughly conversant with this than my dear friend, Major Barden Barden. Now. Really, Bessel, you mustn't. You mustn't. You're too, too flattering. Yes, you are, Barden Barden. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, I'm afraid Major Barden Barden's somewhat shy. But I do know there's no one more thoroughly conversant with this than my dear friend. And so I'm going to hand the microphone over to him. Thank you very much, Bessel. Do you mind if I take the low one? Oh, no. Well, Thank you so much. Oh, excuse me. Yes, I'm sure. so much shorter than you, you know. Yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is Wembley Stadium speaking. And in a few moments, we shall be witnessing an all in wrestling contest for the uh, championship of the world and for 5,000 pounds. It is 5,000 pounds, isn't it? 5,000 pounds. Yes, it is. 5,000 pounds, I thought it was. And the all in wrestling championship of the world. And it is between... Uh, it's between uh, two very, very famous blokes. Their names are quite household words. It's between... Uh, who's it between, Basil? Uh, between Mr. Michael Murphy, the Manchester Mangler, and Sammy Simpson of Streatham. Quite, yes, yes. It is, it's between the Manchester Mangler and the uh, Streatham Strangler. And as I said before, it's for the all-in wrestling championship of the world. Now, by this all-in business, they seem to mean that in this, everything is permissible. I mean, definitely permissible. Kicking, biting, scratching, gouging, oh, everything. It's hardly cricket as it were, is it, Bethel? No, no, no. No, no, it isn't. It. My confrere agrees with me, it isn't. It's hardly cricket. However, they seem to like it and thrive on it, and not all of a sudden they get paid for it. And, oh, here's one of them just coming into the ring now. Which one is this, Bethel? Mr. Michael Murphy, the Manchester Mangler. Oh, the, the Mangler just coming into the ring. A more repulsive-looking brute I have never seen in my life. I say, Barton, Barton. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, I mean a finer specimen of British humanity one could hardly wish to see. <clears throat> He's stretching himself out before me at present. Limbering up, I think, is the technical term. And here comes the other chap. What's his name, Bill? It's Sammy Simpson of Streatham. Samuel Simpson of Streatham has just arrived. And uh, the referee is coming with him. And the timekeeper is with him. There's quite a nice little crowd in the ring now. The referee is now testing the ropes. And uh, the timekeeper has gone over to the other wrestler. He's testing him with the, uh, from his hocks to his withers. Right the way, running his hands over him, you know. And now, oh, oh, I say. The, 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 the timekeeper has had his clock broken, I think. It sounds like it to me. Now they've gone back to the corner and they're waiting for the gong. There goes the gong and, and they've started resting in the centre of the ring about square two or three. Four. Four, four, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One does get mixed up in these things. Uh, they're doing quite nicely. They've gone to the centre. They seem to mean business. Uh, so, so this is their business. Our floor's not. They're doing quite very well. The referee is now trotting around, just keeping himself warm. I suppose that's his morning exercise. He's got to do it this morning. He's doing it at night. <laughs> I suppose that's the idea of it. He's keeping himself very warm. The referee is down. I suppose that's points to somebody, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. Look at that. The mangler has his head tucked underneath his arms and he's preparing to walk the so and so tar. It is, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yes, they've got together about something now. The referee is definitely on top now, definitely. They're all down now. All down at the canal turn. He's demonstrating with the mangler over some technicality or other. A wonderful crowd here tonight, a wonderful crowd. If you only had the River Thames running through here and a few boats on it, you'd think it was boat race, though, wouldn't you? Yes, rather. He's going strong now. In, out, in, out. In, out. I think about 34, I think, at present. Pardon me a second. Thank you. Don't miss it, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. What time was that? Uh, six bells, almost, six bells. Mm -hmm. The referee's in a bit of a quandary. Yes. However, he seems to have the crowd with him. Yes, and he seems to be wishing he was with the crowd. I can explain. I can explain. Just a moment. Of course, this could never have happened to either Eaton or Lords, could it? Oh, no, no, uh, no. There's a deep depression creeping over the mangler's back at present. I, I think it's the Strangler. I don't want you to take my last remarks as absolutely authentic, because I can't quite see from here. The sun is right in my eyes. However, I'm trying to give you the happenings as they happen in the ring, if they do happen, to... Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I, I'm terribly sorry to have to interrupt the broadcast like this, but uh, we've just received an SOS. If there's a Mr. Jones amongst my listeners tonight, a Mr. Jones who met a Miss Williams last year at Bournemouth, if he will communicate with Miss Williams' solicitors, he will hear something which will take that darn silly grin right off his face. Here, Chinese. There's a coloured girl for Bud's plantation number. Where is Bud? Bud! 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 Bud!
I'll catch him. I'll send Cecil's sister back to the stall. Come on, we're going to give you some black looks. Make him up. Come on. <laughs> What are we going to do? I've just been reminded that our picture is due to be shown at the Palladium tomorrow night. What picture? Well, this picture is the world premiere. The, the, the world's going to be unlucky. Yes, but you can't let us down. Mr. Goldberg is relying on you. Remember what you did for the Excelsior films? Oh, yes. Remember what we did for the Excelsior films? Yes. yes. What did we do? Well, your money saved them from bankruptcy. It's a lie. 
We haven't been paid yet. Paid what? A guinea a day. We're the six city types. What? Then you're not real financiers at all? No, we're Albert's uncles. Then you're imposters and you'll get 20 years for this. Excuse me, I have an appointment. And I thought that you might give me my big chance. Don't cry, little woman. <laughs> Be careful, the colour runs. Wait a minute. Now listen, if you don't say a word of this to anybody, we'll make you a film star and we'll finish this picture yet. Hey, boys? Hey, that's an idea. And if we make a success, we'll get Mr. Goldberger to put in a good word for us to the judge. But how are you going to finish it? There's six days' work to do yet. Well, it's either six days or 20 years. Wait a minute. Can't we use some of the film we've already shot and mug them all together? Don't be silly. You can't stick one bit of film onto another bit of film and make a film out of it. It doesn't make sense. Then we'll make nonsense. And we'll call it a Take a Look Twice. A Take a Look Twice. Have another deco. Have another deco. A, a review, review. A review. Oi! Oi! It's fantastical. I can't believe it. We'll wake up in a minute. We are awake. It's you who've been asleep while this gang of imposters have been using our names and making us look fools in front of the whole business world. Well, how is I to know? They gave me a signed agreement. Oh, they've been signing our names too, have they? This is a matter for the police. Hello. Hello. I want to be in it. So do I. Don't argue. There's no parts for you. You're no good for the army. You both got duck disease. Well, what's she doing? She's our new leading lady. Yes, this is my big chance. Oh, Jimmy. Yes. Now, you play the orderly. And when we come to the bursting of the dam... <laughs> we'll play the dam. No. Yes, here, here. Two can burst louder than one. Oh, shut up, Cecil. Now, Jimmy, when we come to the bursting of the dam, you slip around the back. When you hear the cue, heavens, they blast in the dam, you open the water cocks. Here, let us be the water cocks. No. Go on, cock. Let's play the cock cocks. You're not in the scene. Jimmy! Yes? Let us work the camera. Yes, come on. Oh, no, you don't. I'm on the camera. Listen, I'll tell you what you can do. I know, but it's impossible. Well, sit over there and be the audience. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. You represent public opinion. Sit there and tell us what you think of us. <laughs> we will. Now, Jimmy, don't forget the cue is... Heavens, they blasted to them. Again, sir. They evidently mean to blast the dam, sir. Blast the dam, Papa? Yes, sir. Blast the dam, sir. The natives say the river Ganges is sacred, sir. And we have committed sacrilege by damming its holy water, sir. Oh, what a damn shame. <laughs> Papa, if they blast the dam, 5,000 million gallons of water will be released. And we shall be drowned like rats in a trap. You'll be drowned if you don't shut your trap. Oh, by the way, Papa. Yes, sir. Oh, come along, Papa. <laughs> It's been a nice day, Farquhar. Oh, absolutely. I say, by the way, how's Mrs. Farquhar? She's quite all right. How's all the little Farquhar? Splendid. I haven't seen Willie Farquhar in No, no. Sit down, Farquhar. I will, uh, I will. Farquhar, any news of the relief party? No, sir, none whatever, sir. Strange, there is no news of General Bismarck. He promised us relief. Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I wonder where he can be. I think he's out with Colonel Belcher. That's right, he's got the wind up. The Highland Brigade should have been here yesterday, sir. Quite right, Farquhar. I wonder what's keeping those Scotsmen. They're still in Aberdeen trying to raise the fair. Ah, oh, well, Papa, until they do come, we Royal Engineers must hold out for the honor of the tax. Leave the probes. A message, sir. Well, Wells, there's no water in the wells, sir. No water in the wells, Wells? No, sir. Very well, Wells, bring me a whiskey and soda. Yes, sir. Well, Wells, we'll have one as well, Wells. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like to see you do it. I catch your throat. You saucy old sausage. Not a soul in sight. He's cockeyed. Hello. Are you there? No. Good. Right. Headquarters. This is hindquarters. I'm in the enemy's camp. There's somebody coming. I must go now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. We have pulled a half a pound. Bye bye. And now. And now to hide. Where can I hide? Behind your whiskers. <laughs> Oi, oi, this way. Thank you. Papa. Sir. To think that I brought my wife to this hellhole. Yes, sir, yes, sir. This hellhole, Papa. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Keep in step, Papa. Papa, Papa. Sorry, sir, I didn't know you were stopping, sir. And she may soon be at the mercy of Sada Ally, the Tiger Sheik, the leader of the rebel. Yes, sir, merciless with the men, sir, and a fiend with the women, sir. Quite right, Papa. He'll shoot every man, but every beautiful woman he will take to his harem. I bet he takes you too. White hole, one, two, one, two. Not a soul in sight. <laughs> 
That's funny. I could have sworn I didn't spoke. Stop. Where are you going? Me no speak the English. No? <laughs> Bakwa. Yes, sir. Interpret. Very good, sir. Kanduru sava me kalabara no savieka. Oh, la bunda, hey, la bunda. Oh, oh, I mean. Oh, take a bunda. I cut your throat. 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 As I thought, sir, a spare. Oh! Oh, brilliant, Pacwa. How can I repay you? Take a pound out the till. Pacwa, we'll deal with this car later. Very good, sir. Meanwhile, fasten him up. Very good, sir. How shall I make him fast? <laughs> Don't give him anything to eat. Let go. Let go. Let go. Ooh. Ooh. Put your finger on there. Ooh. Don't shuffle with this outrage. Shut up. You shut up. He's in the chair. Why, you poor fools! Ha, ha, ha! Giddy, giddy, giddy! One word from me and the dam will be blasted! Who? There's language. Yes, and there's a signal from me, the dam will be blown to blazes! On my word of honor, I was going to say that. And our men will die for the honor of... Bomb Cutter! Did I hear a shot? Courage, my darling, courage! A message from the front. A message, sir. I'm ready when you are. Shh. Oh, my darling, you must get away. The worst has happened. Is there no way of escape? I'm afraid there isn't, sweetheart. Oh, yes, darling, there's just one way of escape. Oh, get over, get over. Do your stuff over there, not in front of me. My fans want to see me as well as you. You want to see me, don't you? All right! I got you a couple of throats. My darling, there's just one way of escape. I want you to follow the road by the dam until you come to the cliff. Climb to the top of the cliff. It's only 3,000 feet. And when you reach the edge of the cliff... Keep walking. Yes, Papa, I know. Read it. I can't read it, sir. Why not? It's written in Spanish, sir. Well, suck it and see. Papa, I can't read it. What's that? We'll get the prisoner to read it. Yes, but he'll know what it means, sir. Well, rub it out and let him read it. This turf must read it. This what? Turf. Oh, sorry. I thought he said twerp. Papa. Sir. An idea. You put your fingers in his ears, then he can't hear what he's reading. Very good, sir. Read. Ota, ota, catch a piece of throat, Oh, Arthur, I'm so frightened. Oh, wife of mine, I'd like to console you. To tell you the truth, we are helpless. Helpless? Blimey, you're hopeless. <laughs> yes, sir. And the devils are trying to blast the dams off. Now? Shh. Lola, to think that you, so beautiful and so innocent. Says you. <laughs> oh, darling, you may soon be at the mercy of Sada Ally, the Tiger Sheik, the leader of the rebels. Yes, sir. Merciless with the women, sir. And the fiend with the men, sir. He'll shoot every man, but every beautiful woman. You don't mean I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> Darling, if the worst comes to the worst, take this revolver. Take it three times daily. Fight to the last. And remember, the last shot is for you. The last shot is for me. The last shot is for you. Pardon me? Who was the last shot for? Hello, is that you, Fanny? What do you want? What do you got? What do you want? Who was the last shot for? Wrong number. Press button B and get your money back. My darling, if the worst comes to the worst, remember. The last shot is for you. Hello? Oh, hello, love. I'll be home right away, dear, yes. Boys, it's the wife. You'll have to excuse me, but I've got to go now. Well, some other time. Don't let you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Arthur, I'm trying to be brave. And for your sake, I'll keep a stiff upper lip. If you keep a stiff lip, you'll talk like that. That's all right. If you keep a hip up on it. Hark! Oh. Oh, Hark! Oh, the pipers! The pipers! 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 See the new star stand at all the windows! The pipers are! The pipers are! My dead, sir! The pipers are! They've gone, sir! They've missed their way, sir! It must be foggy outside, sir! 
shut the gate, sir. They've got it in the knot. Them. No, they're not able to be hoped for tonight. We've got our men posted all over the theatre. <laughs> A lot of good that'll do. They won't dare to come here. <laughs> box for Mr. Rigby. Yes, sir. The page will show you the way. Page, page. Yes, sir. A box B for Mr. Rigby. Yes, sir. Take this, Miss Smoke. Thank you. This way, sir. Here, I'll show you Mr. Rigby's coat and tit for. Aye? Mr. Rigby's tit for. Tit for that. Oh, look at that. Hang it up. Sockets? Program, sir? No, we've got ours. Well, what arm's another little program gonna do? I don't you? want one. Have a nice ice. I don't want an ice. Have this one, it's beginning to run. Oh, go away. Now you've touched it, you've got to have it. <laughs> No, just terrible. Oh, I've just been listening in on the radio to the opening of your new film. Whose new film? Your new film at the Palladium. My new film? I ain't got a new film. It was never finished. It... Suffering cats! Don't tell me them crazy guys have... Hey, give, get me right away some evening clothes. I gotta go to the Palladium. Oh, but Mr. Goldberger, your medicine! Now listen, keep it, keep it. I'm going to send you six more patients. They'll need it more than me. Go on, get me some clothes, please. Isn't that with a sensation? Yeah. Where are you going? I'm going to take the hat round. Wait till I finish. We'll get more. Yeah. This bitch has got to be stopped. What's wrong, Mr. Goldberger? It's almost finished. Almost finished? Then I'm finished. Ta-ta, ta-ta, say ta-ta, be a 
Release those men. What? All charges are withdrawn. Oh, very well, sir. All right, boys, come on. Free. Go on, now, sir. Go on, now, sir. Go on, now, sir. Until you've seen a Goldberger picture, you ain't seen nothing. I'm in on this. He'll be making us a proposition. Here, whatever he offers, say no. We'll be able to ask our own figure. That's the figure I'm asking. Come here. Yeah, yeah. Partners, partners. Partners, partners, partners. 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 Well, boys, right. hey, you did something for me, so I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to see that you get everything what you deserve. Well, Mr. Goldberger, we'll surprise you. We want a hundred pounds a week each. Oh, shut up, Cecily. Say something about something. Well, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to put you all where you belong. <laughs>